Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Isaiah, Exodus chapter number 3. Exodus chapter number 3. I am trusting that the Lord will help us to bring forth this word in a different way than, than I've ever presented this before. As we look at what God spoke to Moses, I'm going to try to leave all thoughts of ever preaching this these, this way aside and uh, look at this in a new light. Amen. The Word of God says, And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Pretty big job for a man who feels like he's a failure. Uh, here is Moses. He's ran. He's fleeing. He's hiding. He's enjoying life in a comfortable place. He loves God. He's striving to do what God wants him to do. But he's not who he used to be. I would say that his vision of life is a lot different now that he is married and uh, he and his wife uh, he's, he's working for his father-in-law, no longer being raised in Pharaoh's palace, no longer in the position that he once had. Um, but here he is in a new position in life. But God is speaking and God is wanting to use him. How many here this morning, maybe you're in a new position in life than what you've been before? You know, you, the life has different shifts and ways of taking us uh, from where we once were. And so uh, Moses said, Who am I? And, uh, and he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and, uh, and this shall be a token unto thee. I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall I say unto the children of Israel, I am that sent me unto you. And God said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus shall you say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. So God said this. He said, I am that I am. I am. I am unto all generations, and I am as a memorial. So if God spoke that, Sister Jan, to Moses, and He said it will be unto all generations, although thousands of years later, Sister Susan, here we are, but God is still the I Am, Brother John. And uh, Sister Timothy said it will be not only as unto every generation, but Sister Timothy said it's going to be as a memorial. It's interesting the memorials that we have uh, that, that are built that, that we remember. There are statues or maybe there is a graveside. There's, there's different things that we remember. It stands as a memorial. And so as we look at this, I, 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 if you ever read a Moffat's translation uh, as he is an interpreter of the Bible, he said, uh, when, when God renders the name as the I Am, He said, I will be what I will be, Sister Dietrich. I will be what I will be. And so that's very interesting to me as He is a becoming God. And I'll explain more about that in a few moments. And really, we are challenged by the Word of God to become a becoming people. And so... Uh, we, we are becomers. Some of you, you remember going to, 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 to grade school. Uh, we, 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 we took my mom home to West Virginia. And so, because it was such a lovely day yesterday, uh, we, we spent some time there. And uh, uh, we drove down this road where there's a lake. And it's a, it's a beautiful lake. It's, 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 
it's, it's, a, it's just a, a beautiful place to be uh, there in the summertime and the fall. And by the way, I, I, said, I said to my girls, I said, man, it's hard to believe. I felt like I was stuck in time one time with Sister Rachel riding the bus on this road. I mean, it seemed like for yet forever and years, Brother Craig, I rode the bus. But now I am at a different place in life, and uh, it's no longer being a student on a bus riding this bus. Uh, uh, but, but here I am uh, uh, riding this road where there's a beautiful lake, and we took time there just to enjoy watching the boaters and watching the ducks and enjoying the, the little fishes. They were swimming around and letting the girls wave their feet in. Uh, and uh, just a, a lovely place. There was a big bouncy house at one place set up for a birthday party, another pa uh, part of the park there. There was a beautiful area set up for a wedding. And so it's just it's a magnificent, beautiful area there on the Potomac as it separates West Virginia and Maryland. And you get to see the beauties of it. But but I, I realized something, Sister Jane, yesterday. I was a becomer. My world picture has really changed since just living in a little small area and now you get to go out and you can explore and your global, global idea changes and so I would say that we are becomers and so we are uh, becomers as we uh, for a lack of a better word and I don't believe in evolution but as we evolve are, are, are evolving into who God wants us to be in our experiences takes us to a world that maybe we thought we would never be at. Uh, and so here we see that God is what He will be. But the same God that was back then in this global picture that was small is still the same God on this global picture that is much bigger than it used to be. And I believe someday the Lord should tarry and He allows will be even bigger. And so He is a God that will be. He's a becomer and I'm a becomer because all of us are becomers because we're expanding, we're changing our ideas and, and who we are and our life experience. Oh, it's wonderful, but, but God doesn't change because life changes. Right. And so here it is. God is speaking to Moses and He said, I, I, I will be the becoming God. I'm the God. These people, they only know me as being in captivity in, in Egypt, but one day they're going to know me in the liberty of being set free from captivity and there's going to be a wonderful world of promise that they're going to be able to explore, Sister Tina. And I am going to be the God of becomers. I'm the God who's faithful when they're in a captivity and they're singing songs and they're worshiping and they're hopeful for freedom, but I'm the same God of freedom that when they will face giants in their new land of exploration, I'm going to be that God that's there as well. And so He is a becoming God. Amen. It, it, uh, 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 Sister Jan, you walked in this morning and she looks very lovely. Get, 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 get a glimpse of this beautiful lady this morning if you get the chance. And, and, uh, 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 and, and my wife, she looks beautiful today as well. Uh, I do like to tell her that. Uh, and, 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 and so uh, what, what, what do we do? We tell people, Sister Dietrich, when they look nice because it's becoming. It's encouraging. It, 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 it's thoughtful. And, and so sometimes you may say, that's a very becoming outfit on you. You know, some folks, they like to wear uh, certain colors because it makes them feel good or maybe it makes their appearance look bad. You know how all that is. Uh, uh, you women know probably best, uh, but it's becoming. And so here it is that we have a God that is becoming. A, a song of Solomon writes, Solomon writes, he's the fairest of 10,000. Uh, he said he's altogether lovely. And so the picture and the essence of God, he is perfect. And he is beautiful. And throughout the journey of life, we find that, that he is beautiful and that he is perfect. And uh, we know that we can trust all things to God. I want to ask you a question this morning. Have you forgotten the beauty of who God is? Have you? We can't have one. He's a beautiful God. He's perfect. He's marvelous. He, he's wonderful. And I believe this. I'm going to preach on this thought this morning. That we serve a God who is versatile. We serve a God who is versatile. The versatility of God. Amen. He, the Word of God says this, that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God says that He changes not. But one thing that I know about God, God is versatile. 
Even though he is a constant, yet he is virtual. But listen to this. I mean, it's, it's interesting to think about this. Amen. That, 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 that he is always the same. Amen. But, but, but he's different for everything that we need. How can God be the root, but yet God be the star of David? And the versatility that's found in there. And we think about Him being the breeze all around us, but yet He's the breath in which we live and we move. I mean, the versatility of God. We think about Him being the captain of our ship, but yet He's the shepherd. So He's in charge, Brother Josh, on the seas, but He's also a sister Tina in charge on land. And so the versatility of who God is, uh, uh, Brother Lane and Sister Dietrich, I mean, it's, it's amazing uh, that, that he, is, he is the lion of Judah, but yet he became the lamb that was slain for all of us as sinners. The versatility of who God is. Amen. He's Jehovah uh, El Shaddai. He's the God of war. He's the victor, but yet Sister Tiffany, he's uh, El Shaddai, uh, the, the God of peace, the Prince of Peace. And so he, he, is, he is the well of Jacob. And so he's the water that's yet there, but yet he's the giver of the rain. I mean, the versatility of who God is. He is constant, but yet he is virtual. How amazing is that to us this morning in our life that this constant in life is so versatile. He is to a child everything that, that they need him to be, but yet he is to the most geriatric of geriatric people. He is who God needs them to be. He is a versatile God. And so when we look at God, uh, we're inundated with, with dozens of descriptions about him. And so it's just almost uncomprehensible of who God is in His versatility, but yet He's constant. Praise God. He described Himself to Moses uh, not as being a noun, but rather as being a verb. And we think about that. Let me just take you to what, what I'm talking about. Uh, we, we, we think of, about this. God, uh, to me, it seems is a verb. Not a noun, a proper or improper. What do I mean by that? Because when we think about a noun, a noun is what a person, a place, or a thing. But 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 a verb is more of an action word. Uh, when, when when we say that, uh, uh, that that God says that that He is, it means that He is to be. And so if you if you were this morning to Google is to be a verb, it would say yes, it is a verb that it is an infinite verb. And so God chose very wisely and said that I am to be. I'm not a noun. I'm not contained to a, uh, just, just a particular body or a particular place or a particular area. But I am a God of movement. I'm a God that, that, that is eternal. And so He always has been and He always will be. And so He is a God and, and His versatility. If you look at to be as a verb, you'll find that there is versatility that is found in that. Do you know that we serve a God that is so versatile? Sister Dietrich, your needs this morning are different than my needs, but yet the versatility of God still meets both of our needs. And no matter where we are in our walk with Christ, you will find Him to be a constant, yet you will find Him to be so versatile that He meets your need. You may need Him to be a healer. I may need Him to be a provider. You may need Him to be joy and strength. I may need Him just for guidance in an area of my life. The versatility of who God is, and He's constant, yet He will never change. And so when we look at this, it, it, it is being versatile. Jesus said before Abraham uh, uh, was, uh, or I should say God said before Abraham was, Jesus speaking it, amen, before Abraham was, I am. What was he saying? All you can track back to is Abraham. But even before Abraham was, there was God. He has always been and He always will be. Things in life have changed. Uh, we no longer live in barbaric times. Uh, we, we, we progress. Think of the progression that we've seen in our own lifetime. But yet God has not changed. He's a constant. And He'll be whatever any of us need Him to be this morning. I'm a reminder. Some folks say, well, I see God different. My opinion of God is, is different because of my situations. Let me tell you, you may have changed in life, but God has never changed. God is a constant and God is versatile. In, uh, in the book of Revelation, Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He said, I am what was, 
I am what will be and I am what is. I am. And so when we look at this, we find that Jesus, He takes on flesh and He takes on a, 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 between two and three hundred names. He becomes all of it because He's versatile. The versatility of God. What are the things in your life that are the challenges that you need God to be the same? It's not yesterday's problems. It's not yesterday's what. But that God is the same. And He's still God over all. So God is a becoming God. Jesus said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God that met with Moses is the same God that meets us here today. What do you think about that? Sister Susan, the same God that talked to Moses in a burning bush is the same God that's right here in this building today. And if He can talk to Moses from a burning bush, He can talk to us through a message. He can talk to us through a spirit. He can talk to us through a psalm. Amen. The versatility of God because God is still here and God is still speaking. You may say God doesn't speak anymore. He's still the same. If He spoke to Moses, He'll still speak to you. And He's still the same God that came down on Mount Carmel and showed Himself to be God in the face of one man standing alone against all the prophets of Baal. God will still show up and show Himself to be faithful even when you feel like you're standing alone. That's the versatility of God. But yet that's the constant of who God is. Hallelujah this morning. Can I remind you that He's a becoming God? Amen. Uh, he, 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 he's everything that we need. He changes not. And He challenges us to become like Him. Amen. Uh, the Word of God says that we shall, uh, we, 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 we we are not what we were, amen, what, 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 what appears, and, and we're not what we're going to be, amen, for we shall be changed. I'll read more to you in a few moments and get my tongue twisted this corrected to the Word of God. Uh, but, but I want to tell you that we are becomers as well. We've been made after the image of God, so we're becomers. The Word of God says this, that He came unto His own and His own received Him not, but as as, as but as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Let me say this morning, that when we accept Jesus into our heart, and we pray that sinner's prayer, and I, I'm going to believe that everyone here has done that this morning. If you have not, I challenge you to do that. Amen. He creates in us and He recreates in us. And so we're not what we were. Amen. But we're not what we're going to be either. Amen. How awesome is that? Beloved, the Word of God says, Now are ye the sons of God. And let me turn there in 1 John chapter number 3, verse number 2. The Word of God says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. Sons of God means this, that we made that confession of our sins. And now we're adopted into the family of God. We've not been born of, of flesh or blood nor of our own will. Amen. But because the Spirit of God has changed us and drawn us. And, and, and so he says we shall be called the sons of God. Are you and I sons of God? Amen. Sons, daughters of God. And the Word of God says this, but we know uh, that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Amen. We are sons and daughters of God. And we're not like the rest of the world. We are changed. Amen. When we get saved, our global perspective changes. Amen. We put on these glasses and now we begin to see men and, and women as creations of God that are lost and dying without God and they need a Savior and they're trying to find out who they are and they're being molded and transformed into the, the mold of this world when God's calling all the time to come out from among them and be separate. Amen. Be not conformed to this world world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know what? We, our sister Dietrich, are becoming who God wants us to be. God is ever changing, showing us who He is, but He's consistent. And He said, I want you to change to be like me. 
You may say, why am I going through this terrible time in my life? I would have never chose that. You know what? Maybe you had something to do with the choosing of your path and God allowed it because He wanted you to be like Him. And maybe you had nothing to do with why you are here. Maybe God said you need to go down this road on the journey because I want to make you like me and I want to show you a new aspect of who I am. I'm the same, but you've never seen this part of me before. You've never seen my help. You've never seen my strength. You've never seen my deity and my holiness. And so I want to show you that I'm Lord even over this situation. You are not who you thought you would be. You are a becomer. Amen. And I believe this. God is a becomer. He shows us who we are. And He asks us to be like Him. See, we're born twice. Once into sin and once into righteousness. Amen. We were once born into slavery, but God, amen, gives us a birth and freedom. There was a little girl who went to Sunday school and said, Jan, her mom didn't go with her. And so when she came home from Sunday school, her mom was out picking weeds out of her garden. And so to make conversation, the mom said to her little girl, she said, Daughter, Susie, can you tell me what is it that you learn in Sunday school? And she said, oh, Mama, I learned about how God watches us all the time. Her mother turned to her kind of with a little bit of a, 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 a stare and a surprise. And she said, oh, honey, doesn't that make you feel bad that God doesn't ever take his eyes off of you? Isn't that kind of creepy? And she said, oh, Mama, no. Oh, Mama, no. God loves me so much. He's so in love with me. He can't even keep his eyes off of me. I want you to know that our perspective in life should be, amen, God loves me so much that He cannot keep His eyes off of me, amen. God is so effective in making me who I should be that He's watching me and helping me along the journey, every move I make, every down sitting and every uprising, every movement in my body, every step, every blink of my eye, every word in my tongue, God sees and God knows, amen, because He's making me who He wants me to be, he sees what I can do and He believes in me. I want you to know that God is a God of becomers this morning. Uh, the church needs to get out of the rut of just thinking that if I go to church and, and I hope upon a God and I say I believe upon God, I'm alright. God doesn't want you in that worldly frame of mind. God wants you to come out from among them and be separate. God wants you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And God wants you to be a becomer. Amen. God wants you to grow. God wants you to expand. God wants you to experience His holiness and have a deeper relationship with Him. How many of you ever look in the mirror and you notice who you are and you're changing? You know, sometimes it's our waistline. Sometimes it's our hairline. Sometimes it's our nice complexion turning into wrinkles. Whatever it may be, we are changing. And we look in the, uh, in the mirror and see it. We need to be looking in the mirror of God's Word and seeing ourselves changing. I'm no longer a selfish person, but I'm a giving person. I no longer carry hatred and bitterness and resentment and want retaliation. But I see the mirror of God's Word and I'm looking more like God every day. Amen. Amen. We are becomers because God is showing us more and more of who He is. You see, it's interesting. Well, I want to get ahead of myself. The Word of God talks about the disciples. He said, come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. You see, we can't do it on our own. We need God. You may say, well, wasn't Peter a fisherman? Yeah, I remember when he got tired and weary and he ran off and he went to a bowl and said, I'm going back to fishing. And, 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 and God, come uh, after the night, they've been out all night fishing and, and, and hadn't caught a thing. And Jesus shows up. He said, you think you can do it? You ain't no fisherman on your own. You need my help. Throw on the other side of the boat. 
So in the weariness and the tiredness, they threw on the other side of the boat and they brought in such a catch that their nets could hardly keep the, the, the fish in it. You see, if we are going to succeed in this life, you can't do it and I can't do it. We need God who is a becoming God to help us be a becoming people who He wants us to be. I need to hear what God wants from my life and how He wants me to go. I need His direction. Amen. I, I, I can't do it on my own. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. The great thing about becoming a becomer is this, is that we need to change our own way of thinking and trust the one who makes us a becomer. Amen? Amen. How do you want me to think, God? Do you remember in Scripture... There were two times I, I, I read the word was not. You read of Moses coming down off the mountain and he was not the glory of God was up on him. The people came to look at him because of the glory of God. The other time was Samson when he was grinding or, or when, he, when he had uh, 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 told Delilah his secret. He was not that the Spirit of the Lord had departed. You see, we, we ourselves need to know something. That when we get close to God, the glory of God rubs off on us. But when we get away from God, there is no glory of God. I'm talking about becoming a becomer. This God who is full of action and He is wherever we are. I talk to people all the time. Mr. Jane, look at that. I don't believe that way anymore. I used to trust, but my, my thinking is, is, is completely different. Well, I want to ask you something. Who's changed? It's not God. It's us. And if you're struggling this morning, you got to trust God with a new aspect of your life. It's a new adventure. And just because your situation has changed doesn't mean that God has changed. But it's opportunity to see a new idea and a new basis of who God is. Do you trust Him this morning? Do you trust Him? In a world of change, do you trust God that He changes not? That's an opportunity to see the condition of your holiness. There was a lady who went to an airport to pick up her friend, Brother Josh. She was waiting on a friend to come off the plane and uh, get her luggage and meet her in the area where she should have been. And she was a people watcher. You ever do that when you're at the airport? Uh, I'm a people watcher and check out what's going on around. And she noticed that all of a sudden a man got off the plane and came over to his wife. And man, there was tears rolling and they were hugging and kissing and telling each other how much they love one another. And she thought they must have really been away from each other a long time. So she engaged in conversation. And she said, how long have you been gone? How long were you all apart from one another? And they said, two days. <laughs> two days? Two days? And, 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 and I, I, I expected it to be much longer than that because of your passionateness. And they looked and said, well, it's our marriage. We're passionate with one another. We miss one another. Uh, that's, that's the reason why we're, 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 we're apart. She said, oh, I wish my marriage could be that way. A couple replied back and said, it can't be if you choose it to be that way. And she watched the man and woman walk off. As she was watching them walk off, she was her friend who she was going to pick up here. And she said, hey, here I am. What you doing? She said, I'm looking at my future. You see, it really becomes our choice with how we want things to go in our relationship with God. We've got to decide. We've got to decide. We've got to choose and make the right choice. Each of us have the power to choose. When we choose to be a child of God, amen, we're saying, then God, I also choose to be an effective Christian in the kingdom of God. I also choose, amen, to be a new me. 
and I choose to see you in a new dimension every time you give me the opportunity to see you. Amen. I believe this this morning when God said to Moses, you tell them that I am that I am. What was He saying to them? He was saying, listen, there's going to be dimensions that you never knew of. You've never had to face a Red Sea in front of you with mountains on both sides. But I, the I am, will be present with you. I will be the God that opens the Red Sea. And you've never had to face a place where there's no water. You've never had to face a place where there's not the garlics and the leeks and, and the melons of, of Egypt. I, you're going to be in some places where you're going to get hungry. Uh, you, you're, I'm going to give you manna every day. Amen. I'm going to show you a new dimension of who I am. And you have to go down to the Egyptian store. You have to buy shoes and clothing. You have to work hard for it. But I'm going to show you that I'm a God that for the next 40 years your shoes and your clothing will not wear out. I'm going to show you a dimension of who I am. I am a becoming God and you are a becoming people. You're going to grow deeper in the faith as you trust me in the dimensions of who I am. I change not, but I reveal to you in a greater way who I am. I will tell you this morning, I believe that God wants to reveal to every one of us here in a greater way who He is, but you're going to have to become a becomer as well. You're going to have to get out of the old garments, and you're going to have to get in the garments that God wants you to be in. To be who God wants you to be. Sister Holly, if you come to the piano, I want to share this. I shared some of this on Tuesday night. But I told you I would share it on Sunday morning. When Pentecost was birthed, it was in the late 1800s, early 1900s, so Pentecost is not old. But one thing about Pentecost is this, is that John Wesley, most of you have heard John Wesley, that great evangelist Bible teacher, was preaching the message of sanctification. Sanctification. That means purity of heart, of body, and soul, which is pleasing and becoming to God. God said, be ye holy as I am. And so when John Wesley cradled the movement of Pentecost, birthing it to sanctification and holiness, so we may say, holiness, ah. Because sometimes we can get this idea of what we think holiness is in our mind. But let me, let me bring a little bit of perspective to you this morning. So the challenge was given in a Bible Institute in Topeka, Kansas, to the students that they were to read in the book of Acts and see what the moving of the Holy Ghost was about because that is what will bring sanctification. Excuse me for a moment. Bella and Brenda, you need to sit down and be quiet. Birthing a sanctified life. And so the challenge was given to the Bible college and students. There was one young lady there by the name of Agnes Osborne. She began to read Acts and she realized that the working of the Holy Ghost always accompanied speaking in another tongue. Read the book of Acts and see if it lines up. It always accompanied a move of the Spirit of God. So to be a holiness on our own would not work. We need the Spirit of God to do that. Do you know what holiness is? Holiness is this. It's not a list of do's and don'ts. Holiness is this. Holiness, Google, look at research it, is a relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, when we are becomers, it will affect our life because God is holy. He challenges us to be holy. And so, Sister Jan, the challenge to me is in my life, I need to be holy. And I'm realizing life's journey is taking me, Sister Dot, on a journey to where I can see a holy God in a holy light. Amen. We go through things in our life. You know, there are good things, there are bad things, there are things that we fear and we don't want to go through. Amen. But I'm telling you that if you fear God, you'll fear nothing else. But if you don't fear God, everything else you'll be afraid of. Amen. 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 We've got to fear God that He has it all in His hands. Then we fear nothing else. And so God is wanting you to become, be a becomer today. Not because God has changed. God is constant. 
but because he shows us new dimensions of who he is, he challenges us to live a holy life. This morning, God said, I am that I am. I am that I am. Brother Craig, to be is an imperative infinity. Brother Joshua will always be God. And so wherever we're at, to get to the younger years of our life and the later years, amen, in singleness, in marriage, in parenting, in grandparenting, job or being retired or laid off. It doesn't matter. In gain and loss, God is God. So we have to trust Him. Allow God to show you who He is so that you can become who you need to be. Go ask some folks and say, I want to be a decar. I want to become something greater for God. I want this whole this way. I want to give a relationship with God. If that's you, then the altars are open you to come and live first to God. We're together in this morning. Amen. Let's gather in this trust you.